guys, this is part three of my Silent Hill Let's Play. If you want to get right to it, I'll put a marker below so you can skip to the gameplay. If you want to watch the other parts of this, uh, there's a playlist and I will link that below, so check that out. If you're a Silent Hill fan, please let's connect in the comments. I love talking to other fans of the series. And if you like this, please don't forget to subscribe. I do a lot of gaming and horror-related content, and it might be right up your alley. I am going to leave a link in the description to a fundraiser for a program that I do that gives free food, hygiene supplies, essentials, etc. to people in my city who need it, particularly those affected by the opioid crisis. Please leave a comment if you donate, and I will shout you out in my next video. With all that said, the video begins now. Run, Harry, run. Okay, here I am in the other world antique shop. It is summer. Well, it is spring. The weather has gotten warm where I live, and lots of people are out on their quads and motorbikes in the streets. It's actually pretty cool and looks really fun. Um, but yeah, people in my city will like come together on like in large groups on bikes and uh, four wheelers. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm happy they're living their lives, but it is very loud, and when I'm making ASMR, it can, uh, it causes a lot of ruckus, and it can be frustrating to edit. So those, um, those ape-like things that I brought up in part two of this video, I, t I said they were called simians, but I guess they're called rompers. And because of the PS1 graphics, you can't see the details very well, but they are very, very creepy creatures. They're, they're wearing this sort of like leather hood type thing. And they've got some weird like flesh suit type thing on. I don't know, I would Google romper. Once again, the mark of Samael. Daddy, help me. Daddy, where are you? I've always wondered where Cheryl is. In that cinematic, it's very creepy. Very alarming. Like, to me, it conjures up images of, um, I don't know, you know, like abduction and other scary, terrible things like that. Parents' worst nightmare, honestly. Here we go. Rifle ammo. a save point. Saving is so abundant in this game, it's almost too easy. I hope you don't mind that I'm playing at a molasses pace right now. I do want that rifle, I don't remember if I'm supposed to get it. I'll be here. Or where, but I don't know. I can live without the rifle. It's not my favorite. It shoots very slow. I suppose it's more powerful than the shotgun, but the shotgun, you can just blast things pretty quick. The grub. in this game compared to the rest of the series are not the most creative. Like this one is a grub, you know, a giant insect. 
sucked. They are super creative. I mean, Pyramid Head, hello. Okay. I just got gently owned, lightly owned by that grub. Die. It knows where I'm coming from. the only way out there. Are you 
sure there's got to be another way. Wait, I just remembered something. What? There's a waterworks over by the old elementary school. It's been abandoned for years. There's an underground tunnel out there used for inspections or something. I remember hearing it runs all the way to the lake. Really? You think I can get to the lake from there? I've never been down in there myself, so I'm not positive. Besides, it's all fenced off to keep people out. If there's a chance, I've got to try. Harry, don't go. I don't want to be alone. It's so scary. I can't stand it. How about coming with me? This may not be the safest place in the world either. I can't promise you anything, but I'll do my best to protect you. No, I somehow feel I'm not supposed to leave this place. Oh, Harry, I'm so scared. I'm cold. Look, just wait here a little longer. I'll be back as soon as I find my daughter. Harry. Uh, Lisa's voice actress is so good. And she really just sound genuinely dis distressed. Like, those scenes are so affecting. Um, I, like, remember scenes as a kid or from being a kid like when I first heard them I never forgot them I'm, and she says I'm so scared I'm cold like she's bleeding and then that she says like she can't she doesn't feel that she's supposed to leave the hospital it's just um so scary Actually, the voice actor for Lisa is named Thessaly Lerner, and she doesn't have that many voice acting credits to her name. She has a YouTube channel. The Ukulele, I believe, is her name, and I do believe she does play the ukulele. It's a, um, a children's channel, and she's very energetic and quirky and fun. favorite 
favorite scene in this game, and perhaps in the whole series, involves Lisa. Which we'll get to probably in the next part of this video. I think I can knock this game out in four parts. I think that the um, moth also like has to do with apparently some monsters. Uh, their significance has to do with. Uh, like Alessa's feelings toward things. Like she has a thing with insects apparently. Which, yeah, you have to kind of like, this must be what that waterworks Lisa was talking about. All right, sewer time. Don't get audio, but it's supposed to break the lock. Oh, there we go. Mm, the lock is worn out. I may be able to break it if I hit it hard. This game, the sewer. The sewer is scary because you're underground, so your radio doesn't work. And you do not have any signal if there's a monster nearby. You have to just look for the monsters or try to hear the actual sounds they make. But monsters are pretty quiet and they like to ambush. I'll put it that way. So playing this without volume, well I guess I'm going to be a pro. Can't believe I made it through the hospital without volume. But this is less close. Okay, so I'm about to meet Ah, forget what these things are called. It is like really exciting to look at the um, look at Harry's silly little jump. Oh, I I swear to God, I might die. I need to get get out of these things. Range of attacks, like jeez. I probably should just be running, but they move kind of fast. No, okay, stop shooting the one that's already dead, please. And then kill that little cockroach. I want y'all to know that I have never been owned as hard in this game as on this Let's Play. Like I was saying, I don't know if it's my reflexes or... Because I'm older, or if I, I mean, I'm just out of practice because you guys are distracting me by being so cute and making me whisper to you so you can fall asleep or in your hedonistic search for tingles. I would have lost my dang mind if I got killed by those sewer monsters just then. I would have McFreakin' lost it. I've gotten a pretty... okay. The sewers... Um, I'm gonna do my best not to get lost and to get through them as quick as I can, but I always have trouble navigating 
the sewers. They're just a little bit, they're designed in a confusing way. Silent Hill 3, the sewers are very creepy. Silent Hill 3, they just perfected, like, they just perfected the creepiness. They were like, let's just, like, okay, we know what makes Silent Hill scary. Now let's just, um, let our imaginations run wild. 
there's this monster in the sewer. It's there you find like a note and like two sanitation workers have been killed by this like beast living underwater in the sewers. And you've gotta like throw a hair dryer in to electrocute it and kill it, otherwise it grabs you by the leg and pulls you in and it's like first of all, what does this have to do with the plot? But second, I love it. I think if I were to like rationalize it, it's like this game where fairy tales come to life. That sounds like a very Disney thing to say, but... Silent Hill 3 is actually a sequel to this game. Which, um, I wish that it were easier to, it were easy to not spoil this game for people, because, like, when I first played Silent Hill 3, at the age of, I think I was 11, I was 10, come on, when I first played it at the age of 10, um, I did not know that it was a sequel to one, and then, and it's not revealed until a ways in that there's even a connection. It just kind of like, you're like, oh, it's this, like this is who this is, yeah. I really, I really love uh, Super High Patch Wolves. If you're a Silent Hill fan, I cannot recommend his video on Silent Hill 3 highly enough. Um, he argues that Silent Hill 3 was the beginning of Silent Hill's quote-unquote decline. Um, where Silent Hill st started to become less psychological and less surreal the way that Silent Hill 2 had been. Get out of my way. Wow, that's rude. I apologize if you hear some faint background noise. My roommate is watching something at a reasonable volume downstairs. Um, but sometimes things like that seep in and there's very little, I don't know, I, some of the, the criticisms people bring up in my videos is like background noise, and like, it, that's absolutely valid, but in my current living situation, which I like very much, this is pretty much the best I can do. Um, I shouldn't be talking about the flaws in my videos and making you, like, pay attention for them. That's, like, bad form, but this is a ramble. I'm not apologizing. I think, um, I think I make the best word I work I can, but yeah, I'm just rambling about, like, this experience I have where, like, there are inherent challenges to my living situation, but not enough for like, I don't know, I'm not gonna get like a one, a padded, one bedroom, just for ASMR, maybe further on in my career, but, anyway, back to Silent Hill 3, um, Super High Patch Wolf, really, really cool cultural analysis and cr critique, uh, YouTuber, um, in that video, he talks about how Team Silent, the creators, the, the team at Konami that created this game, which side note, they were like pretty much a ragtag group of misfits that Konami kind of got together because, I don't know, they didn't, they didn't exactly know where to fit them into. And they were like, okay, we need a Resident Evil type thing to compete in the survival horror market and try and cash in on that. And they were given about enough creative freedom that 
They came up with Silent Hill, and it was not expected. But they continued. So Super High Patch Wolf, they continued. Um, they carried that success into Silent Hill 2 and really brought Silent Hill as an idea into its own as this. Silent Hill 2 is like the the um missing my words. It's like the crown of the series. It's everything Silent Hill could and should be. It's the best. I believe that many, many others do. Um, and it's, it's psychological, it's surreal, etc. And, um, according to the history that Super High Patch Wolf found, Silent Hill 3 was meant to continue on that and be even darker, if that's believable, than Silent Hill 2. And I am so curious what they meant by that. Because its main character is a teenage girl, and like I really would have liked Silent Hill 3 to tackle a teenage girl's experiences um, for what they are rather than like fitting it into the cult plot. Anyway, I'll read out this dialogue. No, not yet. How about you? Sip. But it's too soon to give up. This craziness can't go on forever. A military rescue squad should be here any time now. If they come through the town, we're home free. I hope so. I better get going. This isn't the time to stand around flapping our gums. Do you know a girl called Alessa? No. Kaufman. Also, I, I laugh at the idea of a military rescue squad in Silent Hill. Like, imagine they introduce that. Um, yeah, Silent Hill 3. I'm just like, um, light trigger warning, I suppose. Because it's about, like, a teenage girl in darkness, like... What are the dark things that a teenage girl might go through when you think, and there's like, you know, obviously, um, pregnancy, abortion, sexual assault, um, and trigger warning, I believe. I'm not going to talk about any more of that darkness, but I think that Silent Hill 3, um, as it is, is, is still very very, um, I'm going to say feminist, and I don't want any gamers to get mad at me, but it, it really concerns itself with the struggles of a young woman, and a lot of the symbolism and themes are, like all the, the monsters are, are very biological and there's these heavy themes of pregnancy and, oh, damn things. Yeah, there's these heavy themes of pregnancy and puberty especially, and what have you. Okay, I really am wandering around aimlessly right now. I apologize if you wanted to see me get to a certain point. I'll be getting at least to the lighthouse on this, uh, section. Anyway, yeah, and I mean, it is straight up about a girl whose body is being used, um, by a religion. Like, her womb isn't her own. You know, so there are those ideas of just how women's bodies are, like, controlled politically. you know, bodily autonomy and stuff, and then, you know, her relationship to her father, and then it, her sort of, um, coming of age by having to 
she has to become an adult in that game, sort of. I don't want to spoil it, but... Okay, there's a keypad. Okay, I didn't remember if I was supposed to go into the Indian runner. Possibly erase his name. I didn't know if I was supposed to go into the Indian runner and, um... Get something, but I guess I have to find passcodes to two of these effing places now. Ramble, ramble, ramble. I just remembered something else I can ramble about. Back to the Kaufman bringing up the military death squad, which lol. Um, I was... I was like a, a funny, funny young person, I think. Um, like a little bit autistic, so I would like get really into things, but I, you know, Uwe Boll, the German director Uwe Boll, is known for like, back, back in the 2000s, he would get the rights to a lot of gaming franchises and make terrible movies as cash grabs. And I mean, if you can appreciate schlock, those are like some bad movies. Okay, I... Gosh, I'm so sorry. So much, um, confused wandering in this playthrough. You are here to relax. I assume, so I hope you, hope I'm not making you mad with my, uh, running around back and forth between the same places. God, I'm gonna lose so many subscribers from my massive subscriber count. Um, okay, but I know, I know what I'm doing now, so fear not. At least I'm still aimlessly rambling. Anyway, Uwe Boll. Schlock director. But, um, gamers hated him because he would take some of their favorite games and make these, and just good games, and make trash out of them. And he made this. He made trash movies. Uh, I saw Alone in the Dark. Garbage. His adaptation of Blood Rain, so bad. Um, that movie is kind of funny, it's got meatloaf in it. I remember like watching it with my stepdad, and I was like, I want to watch this piece of garbage. But anyway, gamers hated him. And I was on the um, online forums, you know. And I kind of just adopted their attitude about Uwe Boll because, you know. Supposedly, there's a key in here. Yeah, I kind of just adopted their opinions. You know, uh, in a group, out group kind of thing, and I wanted to... So I would get very angry about Uwe Boll and his, uh, his grift. And, um... But one time I made a parody, because, like... He would just, he, he, he didn't capture the spirit of the game, honestly, or like, obviously, like, no video game movie does. Okay. Supposedly, there's a wallet on, oh, there we go. Gosh, I just spent like 30 minutes getting nowhere. Kaufman left his wallet full of stuff. I got a Kaufman key. Got a receipt. 0473. And that will get me into the racism store. He was buying sweat. I'm gonna say that was sweat and paper. Wait a minute. Is that sweat? Like, is that Bakari sweat? Because that would be dope. I love I love that stuff. My roommates and I get powdered Bakari 
we sweat and we make like pictures of it. So we'll have like, I can't wait for summer, man. Like just chill in my backyard with a glass of Bacari sweat. If you haven't had Bacari sweat, it's a Japanese uh, electrolyte beverage. It's like Gatorade for intellectuals. Delicious. But yeah, no, I when I saw it, I was like 11 and I was like, actually I must have been like 13 or 12 because it was, I think, after the, sil the actual Silent Hill movie came out. But, um, I remember seeing Alone in the Dark and there was like like a paramilitary squad and all this stuff, like just like armed gun, just like nothing like the actual game Alone in the Dark, you know, it was like an action movie and so I was like, let, I, I, and I wrote screenplays back then, like I told you, I was a certain type of young person, but I, I would write screenplays, that was one of my hobbies, so I started writing a screenplay of, um, Uwe Boll's Silent Hill. I didn't get very far, but my imagining of it involved, like, you know, paramilitary squad coming to Silent Hill. And I do want to push the shelf. There's a crack inside. There has been a helicopter or something flying around for about, I swear, for like five minutes now. And at this point, So I, um, I left Kaufman's hotel room and I'm going to this store to kind of, uh, this is a side mission I'm doing right now. I'm trying to advance the, you get a cool insight into the story. Safe key. a journal on the counter. August 20th. He came by. I handed over the package that the woman left here. September 12th. He showed up at Norman's too. Don't want to be involved with the likes of them anymore, but I'm getting creeped out even more than before. Thought of leaving town, but I'm afraid of what will happen if I do. It's locked. Dummy, you have a safe key. So use it. What is this? Drugs. What is this? Drugs. Okay, that was fun, but I think I'm done. Okay. I don't remember if there's even anything in here to pick up. Norman's grand opening. It's a pretty heavy-handed reference. Three loaves of bread, three gardens of milk, two dozen eggs. Delivered to back door. Daily, 8 a.m., rear entrance code 0885, 0886. Okay, that's what I came here for. The motel, it's a pretty heavy-handed reference to Psycho. Wait, hold on. Fatty X, I always loved that. Espresso, I think. It's like Fat X, but it's uh, like Fatty Wops version of it. I hope Fatty Wop is doing okay. 
Have y'all ever heard the Kids Pop version of uh, Trap Queen? I know this; these are like five-year-old memes that I'm referencing, but I'm like a boomer anyway. Zero eight six. Bam! <gasps> Get off me! Get away from me! I hate you so much. Small. 
bed. What is this? That's none of your business. Instead of messing with that, how about coming up with a way to get out of here? Umph. You shouldn't be hanging around here goofing off. What do you think you're doing? You want to get yourself killed? Get out of here. Okay, take it easy. Unless you want to die, keep your mind on business. Got it. That guy's got to be involved in the local drug racket. Man, was he pissed. And in such a rush, too. That was probably dope in the bottle. Anyway, better let him do as he pleases. I guess I wasted my time. Better hurry, I'm worried about Cheryl. The, the dialogue moves so fast. It's hilarious. A lot of really loud vehicles are going by. I don't know if it was worse last summer than I remember or what's going on, but it's kind of driving me nuts. This is not the time. Don't they know I'm making ASMR? Anyway, I also had to pause it because my friends and I are trying to determine whether my friend Jared counts as a twink. I, he's obviously very good looking, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm thinking maybe an otter. Anyway, yeah, if you do that side quest, you kind of learn about, like Sipple was saying about the drugs. The man being referenced in those notes is Kaufman, I think it's safe to assume. And he's with some kind of group that's running those drugs for who knows what purpose. I mean money, but... Look, I actually do know the backstory of this game. But, um, yeah. Now that part is what transformation in the movie. One thing that the movie kind of, I'd say bastardizes, but you can enjoy the, um, you can enjoy the special effects, like on its terms, whatever, just don't compare it to the game. Um, the other world in the movie, like in this game, I like it because Harry, whoa, that's so cool. I'm just going to check out this environment. The bridge, like, collapses. Harry, um, like, will pass out, and I'll hear the sirens and stuff, but at that part, the world changes before his eyes. And that's how it works in the movie, it's just like it goes completely black, and then, like, the main character, like, watches the walls peel away and, and reveal the other world, reveal all the rusty, bloody metal type stuff. I think it looks really cool, even if it kind of, it gets rid of the dreamy feeling of the game, it makes things very literal. Like, the game is, uh, just, it's so spooky because you're like transitioning. Um, must be an item through there or something. No. Often when a camera angle changes, it means there's an item. But, um... Yeah. Wow. Oh, come on. I'm gonna get wrecked. I'm about to get destroyed, aren't I? Yeah, this is like the hardest, um... In terms of, like, combat and stuff, this is the hardest part of the game. decided to kill that one, because whatever. Um, yeah, the boat and the lighthouse. Sybil. Harry. How did you get back here? I followed the sewer. Were you the one who cut the fence? Yeah. I'm 
glad you made it. I was worried about you. You were worried. Where did you disappear to? Never mind. I want to know what's going on here. What is with this town? This may sound really off the wall, but listen to me. You've got to believe me. I haven't gone crazy, and I'm not fooling around. At first, I thought I was losing my mind, but now I know I'm not. It's not me, this whole town. It's being invaded by the other world. By a world of someone's nightmarish delusions come to life. Little by little, the invasion is spreading. Trying to swallow up everything in darkness. I think I'm finally beginning to understand what that lady was talking about. Harry, hold on a minute. I don't get it. Look, I don't understand it all myself. I guess I can't explain it. Well, what's making this happen? I don't know that either. But I do know Cheryl is there. There. Under whoever created this darkness. Cheryl is somewhere and she needs my help. This whole thing's been a major blow to you. You need to rest. Sybil, I... Well, the demon is awakening, spreading those wings. Dahlia Gillespie. Was it not as I said? I see it all now. Yes, everything. Hungry for sacrifice, the demon will swallow up the land. I knew this day would come. And what's more, the task is almost finished. There's only two left. To seal this down to the abyss, the mark of Samael. When it is completed, all is lost. Even in daytime, darkness will cover the sun. The dead will walk, and martyrs will burn in the fires of hell. Everyone will die. So what am I supposed to do? I've got to save Cheryl. It is simple. Stop the demon. The demon. The demon taking that child's form. Stop it before your daughter becomes a sacrifice. Before it is too late. Stop it. Stop it. She gets very hysterical there. What do I do? Go to the lighthouse on the lake. And to the center of the amusement park. Make haste. You are the only hope. Look, Harry. I really don't get what's going on, but if there's a chance we can save your daughter, I'm in. I'll check out the amusement park. You go to the lighthouse. Sybil, thanks. You will need to use it. Use what? Flowers. Only with that can you stop it. What about Sybil? Very unrealistic. Harry would have, should have run after Sybil and be like, hey, wait. You can't do that. Like, heck, I would have done that in the most mundane of circumstances. Like, hey, wait, my door is locked, you can't go to my house. Hello. Go up, mission anyone, we could really use it. Um, Dahlia's, I really love Dahlia's speeches, they are wild and dark, and when I was a kid, I learned a lot of words, like, and just a lot of, like, the demon and the fires of hell, and I learned the word womb, actually, from her, she says that later, but, um, 
there's the mark of Samael. But yeah, the, the narrator, speaker, whatever of my um poetry book. Well, um, is like obsessed with rituals and vague spiritual and religious ideas because he he's like desperate. He's like from outside of time, lodged into a human body and having to experience like uh, life in the world at the same quote unquote time that he's also still outside of time because he can't, at no moment can he stop being outside of time. But so he's like one of his, like when he's young as like a teenager and a kid, he's like obsessed with like glyphs and stuff because he's like the only way that he finds in the world to, as like a possibility to escape his body and make it back outside of time. And the idea of heaven to him is sort of like going home and or escaping his body. So like he plays around to try and find uh, patterns of significance and glyphs and, and stuff and uh, it's all futile it's all silliness there we see the mumbler for the first time I made a mistake in my other video by calling the gray children with knives the mumblers I think those are called gray children um yeah, there's the sigils and glyphs, and then I have this one character called the Archangel, who is, like the main character, stuck, quote-unquote, in time, but he's got like a, he's like an active experiment that is being traumatized in really bizarre ways, biologically, and one of my poems called The Glyphs is like, um, his brother comes home and finds the archangels back covered in like glowing glyphs that are really painful to the archangel. Oh, that was quick. See, there's like horses and whatnot. Creepy refuse from the amusement park in the sewer. Anyway, yeah, that's um, some of the influence that this game has had on me. I think po probably more so Final Fantasy X. Because, like, yeah, I'm in the glyph slash symbol, whatever, amulet in this game. Actually, oh wait, I want to show you these. There's like little shadow children that trip and fall, but they're not harmful. They're kind of cute, they like squeak. Gosh, I don't know how far I should go. I guess I'm, I should do this next fight and then I can save and the last part will be a little shorter than the others. Thank you. 
is the same stuff that's in the, um, there's a fetus there. More of that theme of, like, growth and growth and metamorphosis and wake up, snap out of it. I really want the opportunity in life sometime to say snap out of it. Get a hold of yourself. This scene is beautiful. Harry, why did they take your daughter? Why her? This scene was really, affected me a lot as a kid. Like, they have this conversation, but it's just going around and around the merry-go-round. I actually haven't told her yet that she's not my biological daughter. She probably already knows anyway, though. We found her abandoned on the side of the highway. Nobody knew where she came from. We didn't have any kids of our own. My wife was sick. And it didn't look like she was getting any better. Aw, uh, so we took Cheryl in. So in that case, that's so sad. There might be some connection between Cheryl and this town. So what do you do now? Cheryl is my daughter. I will save her. No matter what. I love Harry. Such a sweetie. I feel bad for him. I'm kind of angry about the movie because, like, the director insisted that actually Harry is a woman because of, like, his, inst his love for his daughter and stuff. And I'm like, girl, you're part of the problem. You don't think men can be loving and sweet and compassionate. Terrible. Hold it right there. I don't know who you are, what you are trying to do, and I don't care. Just one thing. Let Cheryl go. That's all I ask. What? telekinesis. Ah. Uh, what is this? It's Pink Floyd. Ah. Where's Cheryl? So, with her twitch. 
simple.